All right, guys, in this video, we're going to talk about how SRP does pricing for solar and how a demand management plan works. All right, guys, so as you know, Friday, the Tesla unleashed the newest uh, solar panels. They, their, their smallest system now is a 4.0 kilowatt up from a, a 3.7 kilowatt system. So they increase the energy efficiency of the panels. They're like, I think, bigger panels. Um, and then they also drop the cost about 20% per uh, kilowatt that you're, you're paying. So what I'm going to talk about in this video is why it really doesn't matter on a demand management plan. So um, we're going to go over the pricing about how SRP does demand management. Um, SRP is our power company here in Arizona for the East Valley. So that's like Chandler, Mesa, Gilbert, um, and some of Tempe. So I'm just going to walk over some of the pricing of a demand management plan. So I'll just caveat this with uh, the data in this video is mainly uh, pertaining to my situation and the type of system that I run, my 3.7 kilowatt system with two power walls. And then uh, just it's based off the energy usage that I have going on in my house. So um, just the data I'll pr present in this video um, is just... I'm just presenting you, I want to just present really the thought process if I happen to interject a comment here and there about having a big solar system or a small solar system. Um, it's just how I view these things for, for what my house uses. I think everyone's house is going to be a little bit different, that's right. Um, but the math and the logic, as uh, some others have pointed out before, is pretty sound so you can use the same process that I go through in this video to try to see what the ROI or how the pricing works in your favor. So let's move on to that content. All right first thing we're going to demonstrate here is how you create demand and the way I'm doing that in this demo is I'm going to go outside turn on my pool, and then I'm also gonna turn on some AC units. So just to show you can see like, kind of like what a seven kilowatt, 7.5 kilowatt pull looks like. Um, so here is that footage of me turning on my pool and my AC unit, and then we'll look at what type of demand we're creating. Um, and just so we know, demand is occurring because we're turning on different devices that uh, need a lot of electrical energy and so they're creating a, a demand peak. I've also tried to increase the demand uh, just to illustrate how you might get a high demand by also turning on my pool which is running at 100% filter speed with all the water features. So let's see what our demand currently is. All right, we're gonna go into our Nest application and we're just gonna turn down the AC to just create extra demand, just so you can see, okay, pool and AC running. Um, so I'm just turning down the AC units on uh, my upstairs. And right now we're going to check like what our current demand is. So we're opening our Tesla app. Um, we're gonna hit the power flow. So we'll hit the power flow. And you'll see right now, demand is reading as 7.5 kilowatts on the home. And the solar, solar's producing 2.5 kilowatts while the power wall is putting in about five kilowatts. So we have no pull on the grid currently. And the home is just asking for 7.5 kilowatts. So I'm just trying to demonstrate here that this is a current demand peak that's occurring. So this is happening while I run a pool at full speed. And then I'm also running one of my AC units. So when I run both of those, I'm getting 
about a 7.5 um, kilowatt worth of demand. And if I was to continuously run that 30 minutes, um, that's about what the demand would be, about 7.4 kilowatts in a 30 minute period. Um, but because you can see the grid is grayed out, I'm not going to have any kind of char... Uh, I'm not going to be charged by my power company because that's the ideal goal. You want solar and power wall to take care of your demand. You do not want that grid to become online and for it to hit your house. So if you're, if you're getting power from the grid at this time, then that's going to... Um, negate some of your savings on these demand management plans. But I just wanted to demonstrate how you create one of those demand peaks. All right, guys, it's about 3 p.m. here, and um, it is a weekend, but I'm just kind of showing you um, exactly where the sun is in respect to where my solar panels are. So at 3 p.m., the sun is about right there, and it's gonna come down and sunset there. And my power solar panels are right up on my roof up there. So what I do is I maximize my sun by having the sun set on the side where the solar panels are installed. And that's extremely important on SRP's demand management plans. So that with a mix of the power walls is how you ensure you have the maximum uh, return on investment uh, for SRP. Okay, so on Tesla's uh, systems, if you have like a solar system and uh, power walls, in my case, I have two power walls. So one 13.5 kilowatt hour and another one that's 13.5 kilowatt hour. So the total storage on these guys are 27 kilowatt hours. Um, the primary thing I use the power wall for, just like I was talking just a second ago, is about demand management. So what that means is during certain times, in my case 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., my house is solely charged, is solely powered by these two power walls. And from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., it's a mix of sunlight energy until when the sun goes down, all right, guys, so now that you understand how to fight demand or how to manage demand, um, now we're going to talk about what demand actually is and how it's priced through SRP. So in these next footage here, I'm just going to be kind of narrating the SRP explanation so you understand how demand works with SRP. price plan or those taking advantage of our new residential demand plan, most of your bill is based on two things you can control. The energy you buy from SRP and your peak demand. Okay, so on what these plans, he's drawing out is that there's kind of two different price plans and he's pointing out to one called the residential demand plan and the bill here consists of energy and demand. So let's see what else he says. Your price for energy is less than half what others pay. But the so he's saying on the demand plans, your price of the energy charge of you is less than half compared to others because we pay three to four cents per kilowatt hour, where others are paying, you know, seven to ten cents per. The key to keeping that savings is trimming the demand or grid charge. You do that by reducing your energy peak. Okay, so he says that. The key to savings is reducing the demand to zero. He's kind of erasing it. What's a peak? It might help to think about electricity like the internet service you need to stream a movie at home. When just one device is streaming, everything works fine. But if two or three people start watching different movies on different devices at the same time, they've created a peak. Okay, so they use the example of like kids watching TV and other devices. So they're saying that when you turn on multiple devices at once, just like how I turned on my pool, then I turned my AC on, I was creating an energy demand peak, which means that as these devices come on, they put a pull onto the grid. And so let's see what else they say. P 
peaks cost utilities more because they put more strain on the grid, the network of power plants, lines, and other equipment that keeps you connected. Okay, so he's saying that the peaks put a pull onto the grid, increase the infrastructure costs for the power company. So to reduce your electricity peak and save money, think about your appliances, say an electric. Okay, I'll cut it right here. That these, you should have these devices take the range turns. and a dishwasher. Then make them take turns instead of running them at the same time. And remember, reducing your peak only matters during the plans on PM weekdays during summer and five to nine weekday mornings and evenings during winter. All right, and then he's also saying that the SRP demand times are 1 p.m. to 8 p.m., but really they're 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then in the winter, they're five to nine weekday mornings and we evenings. So five to 9 a.m. and five to 9 p.m. So that's the only time you need to kind of watch for this demand thing. And they're gonna say that the devices should take turns, but really power walls are probably one of your easiest ways to lower demand. Now I have one of the smallest systems you can get. It's a 3.7 kilowatt solar system. Tesla deems it the small size. If you were to go on the website, it's been recently upgraded to like 4.0 kilowatt. So, but what I'm gonna tell you about is I have a pretty big house, like 4,300 square feet. We have a pool, we have lots of energy being used. We used on average about 100 to 130 kilowatt hours per day. And our solar system only produces about 20 to 25 kilowatt hours in the peak summer sunlight, uh, which is June. You might be wondering, how do you have a small solar system at 3.7 kilowatts but use 100 kilowatt hours. So I'm gonna kind of run through the math on that and why it makes sense from a mathematics point of view that you would go smaller on a solar system and the really the only thing the solar system from a financial point of view to get the maximum ROI is to bring your demand to absolute zero. That means that during your peak hours, for us, 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., we do not want to see any demand at all, any kind of grid charge uh, during those hours. Now, why power walls become important is because the sun is only coming up until about, at least in Arizona, it'll start setting around 6 p.m. So at 6 p.m., your sunlight energy is greatly diminished. So what that means is you're gonna need another power source to power the electric, electric demand usage that is coming from the house. So by 6 p.m. you can say your solar power is pretty close to zero. It might be like one kilowatt, but it's pretty diminished. But your time of use plan lasts from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So what that means is you're going to need a demand manager, in this case we use two power walls, and they start powering our house from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, and in order to get the, the best ROI, I'm gonna go into some of the math on why you just need you know, minimal solar power, but more so you just need to watch what's called demand. All right guys, so let's do some math. If we're using 100 kilowatt hours and we have zero demand for the day using a price average of let's say 4.5 cents per kilowatt hour, how much do we spend per day on SRP? So to figure that out, you would take 100 kilowatt hours, you'd multiply that times your price per kilowatt hour which is 4.5 cents, and you would get $4.50. So if you had no solar um, that was supplementing your house, you'd be about $4.50 a day. Now, if you compare that to the national average of like say 10 cents per kilowatt hour per day, 100 kilowatt hours would cost you about $10 per day. Um, so just right there, uh, if you just see on the SRP plan, you're switching from about 10 cents per kilowatt hour to about 
four four point five cents. It it even goes down below that. But let's say it's about let's say five cents per kilowatt hour. You're seeing a fifty percent savings just right there being on the SRP solar plan, and that solar plan does not care how many panels you have. It just cares that you're on the plan. So as soon as you're on the plan, you're at 50% savings. So I'm on the plan right now and I have the 3.7 kilowatt system. And sometimes I ask myself, what if I was to you know, install four more kilowatts and get up to eight kilowatts? So let's do that math. We know that a four kilowatt system delivers, let's say about 25 kilowatt hours per day and 25 kilowatt hours times 365 days a year and we get we get about 9,000 kilowatt hours off that system and that's actually kind of on the high side so but let's go with that um, and then the price per kilowatt hour um, on the SRP plan we're just gonna say it's about five cents which is about 50 percent from the national average so we do about 9,000 kilowatt hours times five cents, and we get $450 a year. So what that means is on average, if I was to add like another four kilowatts to my current system, being on the SRP solar plan, I would get $450 a year additional savings or additional power that is being generated. And if you were to compute how much that solar system costs, let's say it's about $8,000. So $8,000 over about, we can, we'll just round it to like $400 per year, you're still very much in the 20 year payback time. So it would take me approximately 20 years to zero to get back my money on additional solar panels. And this is why I stress on the SRP plan, do not buy a big solar system because you will get screwed. Um, it just doesn't make sense financially for anybody. Um, and re really the only reason you do, you get a bigger solar system is if for some reason your demand is not quantified. Like if you're running like three ACs or something, and you're using like 12 kilowatt hours during the times of 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., and you're exceeding what your power walls and your solar charge provide you, then that might be the case, but I, I guarantee you it's pretty rare. Most people, you know, even eight kilowatts system is overkill because there's just no and there's no return on investment on solar panels. The return on investment comes from bringing demand to zero. And I can do a little math on that as well. So let's do some math on that. All right, so on SRP, we pay $32 fixed grid fee. You're gonna pay $32 no matter what. The next fee you're gonna pay is per kilowatt hour. We're just gonna average that out to about five cents per kilowatt hour. So the way that's measured is you use a certain amount of energy, you have some usage, okay? And then your last fee is called the demand fee. So now how does the demand fee work? The demand fee looks at your highest demand over a 30 minute window. So let's say I ran my AC for at five kilowatts over a 30 minute window. So I ran it straight for at five kilowatts for 30 minutes. My demand would get registered for five kilowatts and they take the maximum of these 30 minute windows between 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. But let's say it's about five kilowatts. Um, using the customer average demand plan, which is called E15 from SRP, currently that plan charges about $22 per, uh, kilowatt. So you can see that the biggest um, coefficient in this equation is demand. So we, if you were to look at the math, you would have 32, which is a fixed cost, which we don't care about. You're going to pay 32 no matter what, plus 0 0.05 
times kilowatt hour. So that coefficient is 0 0.05. It really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things because it's so small. The thing that does matter is the demand. So when you put our last um, item in this equation is the demand, which is $22 per kilowatt. So as long as you bring that number of kilowatts as to as close as zero as possible, your total equation is just $32 plus the amount of usage that you have times five cents. And if you do all that math out, you will never ever get an ROI on bigger solar panels as long as you bring demand to zero. And, and that's the reason I feel pretty adamant about trying to advise people to make sure they research these things. And if you really don't understand how the SRP demand management plan works or your time of use or time of use plus demand management plan, and it, it doesn't have to be just in Arizona, uh, these plans exist, you know, in Florida, in New York, wherever. Um, if you're signing up for what's called time of use or demand management, you really should understand how much you're paying per kilowatt and then understand that is it based really on the size of your solar panels? Are you going to see a better investment because you install more solar panels? Um, I think I see... Too many people, uh, they just try to buy the biggest solar system possible. They don't do the math. They don't try to see how much their savings per year is. And maybe that's fine to them, but economically or financially, it, it doesn't make a whole ton of sense. Um, it makes more sense, I think, to do the math and then depending on your, your economic situation, you might figure out that, you know, the bigger solar system isn't really worth it. Maybe it's worth it to bring demand to zero or to do some kind of price arbitrage to where I'm going to see savings quicker. And this is how we get into faster ROI. Um, most people that don't do this type of math, they're looking at ROI like at 15 years, 16 years, up to 20 years. Um, if you make sure you're optimizing the, the items that I've suggested, you can see ROI in 10 years. You can see ROI in eight years. Um, I've even seen ROI for some folks at six to seven years. So all kinds of depends on your situation, but it's just really important to understand how these power plans work and how they bill you. So that's all I got on this video. Please hit the like or subscribe, give me a comment, and tell me what you think.